Well, welcome to Talk It Out, the show where we discuss the Sunday message. Uh, my name is Chase. I'm one of your hosts, and I'm joined by Jeff. hey And Montana. Hello. And we are kicking off a, a new series um, called You're Invited. And uh, we got four weeks talking about some of the different things that Jesus invites us to. Uh, and I think part of, uh, Josiah kind of talked about this, uh, we've been setting up this series as a, an easy kind of on-ramp for uh, people to invite friends. Uh, we also sent out some special mailers to the area. Uh, and it's really a great opportunity, I think, to come with some of the, I would say like the bigger questions um, or the bigger curiosities that Jesus uh, talks about and invites us to. And obviously the first one being this new life and what that really looks like. And so um, Montana, you had a couple questions, I think, as you were listening to it that you thought, I would love to answer someone to answer these questions. Uh, so why don't you get a kick off first? Yeah. So one thing I, I really liked about yesterday's message is we spent a lot of time talking about what the invitation means, or I guess where we see this invitation presented to us um, and why it's better. But <clears throat> I wanted to talk a little bit today about what like what we're invited to. So we're invited to this new life, kingdom of God, um, eternal life, abundance life, all of this, all these different kind of terms. And so I was hoping maybe today we could dive into what does the kingdom of God look like for us here today? And um, yeah, just, just sort of the, the practical side of that. Because in my perspective, like you just said, Chase, uh, this series was really tailored towards um, maybe maybe new Christian, maybe just a curious person who's like, I, I don't really know anything or I'm not sure what I should know. Um, so, yeah, it's like, what does that mean? What does the kingdom of God mean? That's a great question. Um, Thank you. So, <clears throat> and we talked a little bit about, I think the week before I shared like the Lord's Prayer and kind of this yeah. initial... Um, invitation to God's kingdom coming on earth um, and and his will being done on earth. And I think um, the the words kingdom are hard for us to connect with because we don't, and I say we Americans specifically, um, we don't live in a monarch type society. We don't live with this single kind of governing head that is that forever. RIP uh, to the queen. RIP the to the queen. Um and so I think that language it was very specific to that that time of people who were living in kingdoms, people who had kings that would take over other kingdoms. And so Jesus, you know, if he was here today, he may have used a different language, but he, he says kingdom, kingdom of God. Uh, you'll also see kingdom of heaven. Uh, and, and, and to me, there's also some of the language from Paul that would talk about our citizenship not being here. Sure. Um, and it's this idea of, I, I think this this tie, this invitation, this connection to a new family, to a new kingdom, to a new country, uh, whatever language I think that sticks the most for you, um, that operates different from any other country, family, or kingdom. Um, you think about the the nation of Israel in the Old Testament; they were not they weren't a nation by borderlines. Mm -hmm. uh, they were constantly traveling. Con you know, they were in Egypt and then leaving Egypt and they were moving from one spot to another. And this generation lived here and then they lived there and they built up walls and then the walls got broken down. And so there's this constant movement of, of like a physical geographical movement. But at the same time, there's this, these sort of set of like standards, these, these, mm -hmm. this code that they would live by um, that didn't really have anything to do necessarily. It eventually got there of how you operate and live, but it was more about the identity and the value that you had as a person. So I think when Jesus talks about the kingdom, uh, the kingdom of God, us entering the kingdom of God, us experiencing the kingdom of God now, not just mm -hmm. heaven, because mm -hmm. um, that, that may even be a whole nother deal, um, but really like living by the standards of a different kingdom, mm -hmm. which his kingdom, and it looks opposite from the rest of the world. Um, it looks opposite from the way that, culture, society would say to live. And yeah. one of, uh, and I'll find the verse in a second, um, that, that Paul describes the kingdom uh, of God being, he says, it's not just eating and drinking. He's kind of saying, it's not all these rules. It's not the things that, uh, the laws, the things that we would, we would kind of define a kingdom or a mm -hmm. country by. Um, but he says, and I always kind of come back to this personally, uh, he says, it's righteousness, peace, and joy. Mm -hmm. And and those three descriptors, righteousness, which we are made, uh, it, we are made in right standing because of Jesus' sacrifice, and then peace and joy specifically. He could have gone through a bunch of them. He could have called out uh, more of the fruit of the spirit. 
hear it, but he says those three things. And when I think about peace and joy, um, those are hard to come by without without measuring, without yeah. stuff, without saying, well, I have this and I feel secure in this and I've got all this in the bank and I have this much land, like things that other countries or, or, or kingdoms would say like, this is why we're at peace, you know, mm-hmm. because we have the best defense and we have all this land. This is why we're, we're joyful because we've beaten these other armies. The fact is like, you're going to lose. You're going to win some, you're going to lose some. Like, like you're going to have, just like the Cowboys, <laughs> you're going to have hard seasons. You're going to have uh, easy seasons, but, but experiencing, experiencing righteousness, peace, and joy is possible for all of us, which that is experiencing the kingdom, even in the middle of your mess, yeah. no matter your circumstance. And that's the invitation ultimately, I think that Jesus is saying, we have a way, like we have an opportunity to live like this now, not just in heaven, but now in the middle of a crazy world. That's yeah. Romans 14, verse 16 and 17. Nice. Not Ooh. because I just knew that. Bible don't quiz. even be, don't, that's not me. <laughs> No, I was actually reading those verses this morning mm-hmm. um, because, yeah, I was I was looking into that and <clears throat> exactly what you said. I like that Paul is is saying this is not what it is. Like, it's not eating and drinking. And <clears throat> when I was looking at the context of that verse a little bit more, it's because the Roman church was was overly concerned with, um, you know, c- can we eat non kosher foods? Like, is someone allowed to drink and, you know, do all these like technical things. And Paul's like, you're kind of missing the point. Like it's, it's not about what you eat and drink. And, um, I heard someone say the kingdom of God is a a kingdom of the heart, not a kingdom of the stomach. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. You can be healthy. Maybe, you know, like there's lots of verses don't get drunk. Sure. But, um, it's like the kingdom of God is, is a kingdom of, of the heart. And so I yeah. thought that was interesting. I always think about it in the sense, and I like how Josiah said towards the end of his message where he talked about it's a hard decision to take yourself off the throne and mm-hmm. put God on the throne. And I always think about it that way of like, he's inviting you to this different way of living. Like if, if without Christ, what, what are we supposed to be doing with our lives? Like is my right. life just meant to get married and have kids and try to go on cool vacations and hope that they grow up to be good people and then get old and pass away. Like, is that, is that what I'm here Mm -hmm. for? Or is God calling me into something a lot deeper? And so when I think about the kingdom, it's that it's giving my life purpose. It's, it's joining this, this story that's been going on since the beginning of time of being called to be the light of the world, to push out darkness um, Mm -hmm. and to show that love and share that love with other people and to expand the kingdom. And so when I think about what that invitation is, it's that he's calling me to a life with purpose that's meant for something else other than just the best things that I can do for myself. Yeah. Mm. Which when you say that, I think about the, we all kind of, you know, hear the same invitation, but or the same words. We, we hear Jesus's words, we read them, uh, but there's something specifically in us that is attracted to that new life. Like you said, Jeff, it's, it's purpose. And for me growing up, it was the same. It was purpose. It was, you know, I, I, I see, and not that anything was wrong with this, but I just, I saw the way people lived around me. I saw my family and I just thought like, surely there's more than, yeah. than that, than working for the weekend or living till vacation, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and really like finding that, that spot where, you know, I could use the gifts that God gave me for good yeah. that could leave a lasting impact. And so, um, you know, as you think about yourself, like, I know you said Purpose Montana, even for you, like, what, what was, like, what was attractive about the life Jesus was inviting you to over the life that you were living? Was it purpose or was it something else? Yeah, I think that <clears throat> for me, it was, it was a life, um, that I could feel accepted or maybe that's not even the right way to phrase it, but I guess it was like I found that there was a life that I could have hope in Mm -hmm. Um, because a lot of my circumstances growing up, I feel like I was, you know, kind of trained to think like nothing is ever that good. You know, you're probably like this is probably going to go wrong or this is not going to work out. This person is going to leave you. This thing is going to hurt you. And it, it got to a point where I was like, oh, my gosh, like is is this how the, this is how the world is? Mm-hmm. Like we're just, everything sucks. Like <laughs> I don't want to live like that. I don't want to wake up every morning and think like, 
oh, what's the next bad thing that's going to happen to me? And um, I don't know. I just, I, I think I've talked about this maybe a few weeks ago on the show, but when someone had said, like, wow, I've seen how God has really worked through your life, it was such a wake-up call mm-hmm. of like, oh, man, I don't know. You talk a lot about Romans eight twenty eight, like God makes everything for good. And <clears throat> that verse can sometimes, I can get a little angry at that verse. Mm-hmm. Like, what do you mean this is for good? I don't, I don't understand. Like this fundamental bad thing happened. How is it good? Mm-hmm. And I, there's always like some, well, what I heard growing up, always excuses of like, well, that's made you have a stronger character, right? Or like, <laughs> now you know what not to do. Mm-hmm. And that's one of like, one of the most frustrating things I ever heard growing up was like, well, you know not how to parent now. I'm like, that's that provides me no <laughs> peace right now. <laughs> like, thanks. Uh, but anyway, so the first time someone was like, no, 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 no. Like, that's not, I don't think that's what is trying to accomplish here, that if you just spin the bad things the right way, they can mm-hmm. look good. It's like, no, God is still good, and you can still find good after that. Like it's mm-hmm. it's like this hope that you long for, long for a life that's not uh, full of disappointment, honestly, and hurt is available to you. Like, and for me, it was like it. You talked about this too last week, like making it personal. Like, I I can have a life of hope. Montana mm-hmm. can have a life of hope, not just you know oh, that's a nice thing to say, but, you know, finally believing mm-hmm. that, I guess. Yeah. And I think the, the, the X factor to that verse of God uses all things for the good of those who love him who are called according to his purpose. Like, like there are things that are bad, like you said, that it's hard to argue. No, that was a good thing, or it can be a good thing. Um, but, but ultimately there's this faith element still to it that mm-hmm. like God didn't want that for me. God didn't choose that for me. And that's a whole you know, sometimes a theological jump for people too of, sure. of getting past that of like, God didn't cause a bad thing to happen, um, you know, but, but getting to that place of believing, okay, you know, and I think even Josiah got, got to this kind of in the middle of the message of mm-hmm. being present in today. So like, it's one thing to I think battle our past with faith of like, well, God can use that one day. Or, you know, like you said, people, oh, well, now your character's built or now you know what not to do. But like the reality of, of, and it's a, it is a step of faith and it is a, it's still even a little miracle of focusing on today and being present in this moment and not on the bad things that happened or the bad things that I did, but like really like, okay, this is the moment I have to steward right now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, God using that for good, God using um, even the, the triumph over of, you know, over the guilt or the shame or the past, like us being able to move forward, us being able to heal, like God using that for good. Mm-hmm. Because if, if we can do that, we can be present today. Right. We, we right. can sit there with our family, with our friends uh, by ourselves, and like really fully engage in the moment. I was, uh, you know, I posted on my story last night and someone had messaged me uh, and they were talking about like, you know, I just went for a walk and, and just thank God and, and tried to focus on thanking him as I was walking for everything from today. Um, and, and I've kind of noticed myself lately doing that same deal, just at the end of the day, uh, wh- whether it's, you know, with Daisy, she's kind of the last one to go to sleep or even after Daisy, if it's just going outside, down to a thousand degrees uh, and just like taking a breath and like really just saying a couple things I'm grateful for, which, you know, Josiah talked about too of, of, you know, and he, I, I think one of his kind of messages he likes to share throughout all his messages is this idea of, um, it's not even an idea, like the theology of gratefulness, like yeah. that's what enters us into the presence of God. And so when we do that, it is worship. And I do love how he wrapped up with, with that idea of like being grateful and present is our spiritual act of worship. It is mm-hmm. the way that we choose to live um, because when you're grateful and when you're present, you're not focused on tomorrow. You're not focused on the past. You have an attitude that is, that is open to receive everything. Mm-hmm. And, and that is the posture of Jesus. That's the, the posture of the kingdom, I think, that he calls us to, to where we are living. Like, we're not just saying it. We're really living a life that is inviting. Yeah. Like, we're inviting mm-hmm. people to experience Jesus through us. We're inviting people to experience Jesus for themselves. But, like, it starts with us. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think there's the obstacles. There's things that keep us from getting there. Um, you keep joking about the Cowboys, how <laughs> just sad, sad it is. But like, 
that like as goofy as sports are, like they can become that. Like oh, yeah. it can be really shallow things that keep us from being grateful and having a good attitude. I'm yeah. there this morning. Um, <laughs> but really like, I, I think that is, that is part of that invitation is whether it's, it's the shallow things that aren't bad or it is bad like things. Bad like things, yeah. how, how do you, how do you fight those things to stay present mm-hmm. and to be grateful mm-hmm. and to be open for the invitation Jesus calls you to every single day? Cause yeah. You know, and Josiah mentioned this too. Like there, there's a moment I believe Romans tells us there's a there's a moment of salvation of confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart uh, that Christ is Lord. But then there's this everyday salvation too. Like yeah. every day of of saying, man, I need Him again today, and I need to say yes to that invitation today, uh, because who knows what who knows what'll happen today? Who knows, you know, the bad or the good? Like mm-hmm. every day is that opportunity to reconnect and come back to that. Yeah, I definitely think it helps to. Honestly, like for me personally, it's spending time in silence. Uh, I think that just very naturally, we like to define our days. And so before the day even starts, we go, today's going to be a good day or today's going to be a bad day because I have this meeting or that meeting or I have to do this thing that I don't want to do. So I'm not going to really enjoy today. Uh, But when you spend that time, just kind of it's renewing your mind is literally what's happening. But you spend that time just to kind of take a step back and remember that invitation. Mm. You're reminded that every single day there's this weird like potential in it. Mm. You can meet somebody new today. You can encourage somebody new today. You can uh, experience uh, gratefulness in a different way, whether it's just like eating food and realizing how good it tastes or something like that. Like when you take that step back and think about all the possibilities that today has, you understand that if, you're, uh, if you allow yourself to be present in those moments, that God moves in those moments and he can move in your life every single day. Yeah. And it's not just waiting for the next Sunday or waiting for the next big emotional moment, but you can have that relationship with him today. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think that's, that's really good. And um, yeah, I think a lot of it is about being excited, like that feeling, you said potential and that that made perfect sense to me. Like you have this thought of like, oh my gosh, what's going to happen? Like, I'm so excited. And then I I think about times that I'm most excited in my life is there's some sort of deadline. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, in, you know, this amount of days I'm going on vacation or Mm -hmm. this is going to happen or the holidays or whatever. And and you're like waiting for that. And that feeling is accessible daily. Um, And I think like exactly what you said, just being, being present, whatever. Yeah. We've said that a hundred times, but for me, what it means to be present, like a grounding technique that I learned in therapy and whatever throughout life is placing your feet on the ground. And I like wiggle my toes a little bit or just press my feet further into the ground. And it's like, okay, you know, there, I can feel my shoes and there's a rug underneath of me and I'm sitting on a cushion and it's like, oh, now I'm in the studio and I'm <clears throat> at work and then I'm in Denton and you know it's like I can I'm allowing myself to be here and then realizing what that means like it, mm. it, being here is not just filming this this podcast right now but it's being here of like oh my gosh that's so exciting <laughs> like look at all the things that could happen today like, yeah, that's so what great. you're talking about is anticipation mm. and and hope like hope for mm-hmm. something good to happen mm-hmm. and I think I think as you think about um, just I kind of opened up with the Acts 2 piece of uh, the believers in the upper room. And this is the, you know, the Holy Spirit comes, the baptism of the Holy Spirit and powers them to go and uh, preach the word boldly. And and that, that, that piece of like, what are you pursuing? Like, what are you, what are you chasing after? What is in the forefront of your mind? What are you anticipating? Like, what are you hopeful for? Yeah. You know, like you said, the, the, kind of easy, basic, shallow one is like, oh, I have a vacation, like the deadline right. thing. Like, oh, I have this vacation coming up or, oh, I have this hard meeting coming up. Once I'm done with it, then, then you know, the rest of the week will be easy. Like pick your thing, whatever it is. Um, and, and we get this anticipation for something exciting to happen there. Yeah. And the life of Jesus, this daily life of following him, like you said, Jeff, of, of like having our eyes open and and looking for people around us, looking for opportunities to serve, looking for opportunities to be generous. Like that invitation every day gives us that feeling of anticipation of mm-hmm. what, what, what could God do today? And what could he do in me today? And what can he do through me today? 
And when we live that way, we're not waiting for vacation. We're not waiting for a weekend. Like every moment is that opportunity of, man, like I, I like you said, Jeff, yeah. I'm looking at my calendar. I got this meeting or man, I'm, I, I'm thinking about this person in that meeting. And afterwards, yeah. like, I want to tell them something encouraging. Mm -hmm. Like that is, that is the kingdom. That is a kingdom perspective over yeah. the culture perspective of, of saying like, when everyone else thinks this meeting is going to be bad or when everyone else, you know, it's, it's a long week or, oh, my kid's got to do this thing. Like a kingdom perspective says, okay, but God could do something really cool in this. Yeah. Yeah. Could be totally mundane and normal. And, and and still like really like you can go to bed and it's like I still did an eight to five today I still had to get lunches ready for the kids for tomorrow but like it can still you can go to bed though with with this this joy and this this purpose filled moment of that day of of being invited to just live it differently mm -hmm. and and I think that ultimately you know, like you said, whether you're, you're a new Christian and kind of the big invite of salvation and a new life, or uh, you've been following Jesus, but, but I mean, honestly, like the, the fire's burned out a little bit and you're a little tired and your focus has shifted and your faith has waned. Like there, there's this opportunity back into pressing into the moments of your day and seeing God show up and seeing him not just show up, but like like use you as a part of it. Like yeah. you get to play a part of being the kingdom to somebody else. And and I think that's what we see a lot in Acts is I mean, they were sacrificing. They were, they were feeding each other. They were helping. They were serving one another. But all of that was a pursuit of expanding uh, God's kingdom. And in that there was excitement and there was problems. They, I mean, look through the, the book of Acts is great. It's just so real. Like at some points we're, we're arguing and we're having mm -hmm. to split teams and you go that way, we'll go this way. We love Jesus. Okay, good. We're still, we're still <laughs> on the same team. Um, and there's points when they like, it says like, well, it was, it was good to us and them. It was like, well, God didn't really, you know, scream out of the sky at us, but we all are in agreement. Let's do it. Like mm -hmm. it's so practical and real, which is why I love it. Uh, but ultimately it was exciting because they were, they were taking risks. They were, mm -hmm. they were challenging the status quo of just living life, just being a good person and really like helping people. Yeah. And I think the, a church on fire, like a church that's exciting, that you show up to, you want to be at, uh, that 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 cross timbers to me is 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 stepping into that people are excited to come tonight is because like it's not just come and worship, it's not just come and watch, it's yeah. it's come and be a part, come and lead, come and give, come and and lead a fix my ride and lead a group that we just launched this weekend. Our groups launched like come and do what the Bible says. Like mm -hmm. that's the invitation. You want to sit here for an hour and listen to someone like go on YouTube. But like, if you want to come and be encouraged and, and worship with somebody and be challenged to go out and live it, like that's, that's the church. Yeah. And, and I think that is the opportunity we have in this season of Cross Timbers. And we've been here, like we've all been here different lengths of time, but like that to me is, is what's exciting about this season is like, like, it's not just come and sit in a building. Like, yeah. like, yeah, come and get encouraged and filled up and high five someone so you can go out and live that risky purpose-filled, challenging life of pressing back against culture, of pressing back against community uh, that's not healthy, that's not building up, uh, that's not hope-filled and like infuse hope into those places. And that to me is, that's what Acts looks like, looked like then. It's what Acts can look like through us today. Yeah. And I, I really liked how in Josiah's message, he talked about, it's this invitation that is constant and ongoing. Yes. Because I think a lot of people get caught up with like, I want that, but I need something to happen first. Mm -hmm. Kind of like in Acts 2, but the whole thing with Acts 2 is that's like when the Holy Spirit showed up and mm -hmm. he's been with us ever since. Mm -hmm. So the same Holy Spirit that was there is the same Holy Spirit that's with you. Mm -hmm. And so this invitation is always in front of you that you can just, you don't need to have this big <laughs> spiritual moment before you can finally go out and do all these things. You mm -hmm. can do it like right now listening to this podcast, you can go do something, whether it's encouraging somebody, whether it's just saying hi to somebody you don't normally say hi to, or it's doing one of those bigger things, joining a group, helping out with Fix My Ride, all those things. You can do that right now. Yeah, The invitation is That's right so in front good. of you. What you just said is so good because I, I think sometimes like we, we separate the Bible out as, as this, you know, big metaphor and just some stories, but it's historical. And like what you just said is exactly true. It's like there was 10 days between Jesus's ascension and the Holy Spirit coming. Mm -hmm. And then he comes to us as believers. He dwells inside of us. That's the story of Acts. Like it's the acts of the spirit in our yeah. life. And and Paul talks about, that's, you know, he brought Romans 8, love Romans 8. I feel like it's a 
all-encompassing chapter. If you just need one chapter of like, what does life look like? Go, go look at Romans 8, uh, which Josiah also mentioned too, uh, that nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ. Like yeah. nothing can separate you from the, the invitation Jesus gives you. But, but what he says in, in Romans 8 is the same spirit, like mm-hmm. the spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you as a believer. Yep. And, and all of this, like if you need to look at a, a map, like the whole map all the way goes to this tiny funnel of Jesus and his death and, and his, his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection that opens it up for all of us. Mm-hmm. And, and that spirit that, that came, like you said in Acts 2, is here today, he's in us. And that's, that is what we're being present to. We're being present to God speaking to us, God's spirit in us. It's not it's not being present. Like Montana, you mentioned kind of the, the, the tools that you use of, of, you know, those sort of meditation, like being present, you know, figure out my surroundings. Like that, that is a tool ultimately to get to connect to mm-hmm. the spirit in you. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like, and I love those therapy, meditation, all of those things. Like the Bible talks about that. Like those are great tools ultimately to point us back to, okay, this is helping me to connect to the God that's in me, to the spirit that he put in me, that, that, that he's speaking to me constantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, it could be through worship, could be watching the sunset, could be in God's word, but like, that's what we're present for. We're not just present to be hippies and look at me, I'm meditating outside with my legs crossed on, on, during the sunset. Like <laughs> we, we are present to connect with God. Yeah. And in that connection is when, it, it's like, it's when you receive uh, kind of the new instructions, like, hey, tomorrow's not just a bad meeting. Tomorrow's an opportunity to connect to someone. Yeah. Hey, this <laughs> this weekend is five days away. Hey, but you know what? You're gonna find moments of rest before then too. Mm-hmm. Like that's a different way of living. And to me, we've all kind of said it, that's a better way. Like that's a better life. And, and you know, I, kind of second part of this, as we've received, we have an opportunity to now give, right? Yep. And so as y'all think about what you've shared of, of, you know, Jeff, for you, it was purpose. Montana, for you, it was acceptance. It was, um, it was love, not based on circumstance. Like, how has that, how has that informed your way of sharing the gospel with somebody? The way you've received it, how has that, and, and like real stories, if you can, of how that's helped you to be able to have a conversation with someone about accepting the invitation to a new life? <clears throat> for me, it's, it's, the idea of like at any moment God can do whatever he wants. And so literally like I, I, I kind of connect with this series because I, I was the guy who got invited to church. Mm. Like I, I went to youth group all the time as a kid, uh, but I was never really about it. I got invited and I've probably been to a, diff- a youth service a hundred times and all of a sudden I get invited again when I'm 20 years old. I'm not even the age of youth, (laughs) but I go and God does something miraculous in it and completely shifts my entire life. And so it's just this idea of like, at any moment, God can do these amazing things. And so even if it's as small as an invite Mm -hmm. of saying, hey, come to church, it could just be a normal Sunday. It could be the weird Sunday where all of a sudden the pastor's calling out demons or something. Just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) But, but it, it, every single time it, there's an opportunity for God to move. And so it gives me the encouragement to go out and, and fulfill that purpose that he's mm-hmm. given me and to not be scared to invite somebody or get to know somebody a little bit better. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Um, I think for me, I, I, I think <laughs> God has, God has placed people in my life that I feel like are, are similar in circumstances um, which has been really great for me, but also it gives me the opportunity to frame the gospel. Maybe that sounded a bit weird, but it's like the, the gospel ultimately is a story of love, right? And so a lot of the people that I have run into, mm-hmm. um, I feel sometimes like I'm looking at a different version of myself. Like, And it, it always comes down to this person doesn't, believe that they deserve love. Mm. And so I I get to explain the gospel as a point of like, Jesus loves you and you, you don't need to do anything Mm -hmm. to earn that. And because you probably feel like I'll never be able to earn it then. Mm -hmm. Like I clearly throughout the rest of my life, like I've never been able to earn anyone's love. And so 
you know, what, what does it look like? And so just being able to say, like, one, Jesus empathizes with your pain, mm-hmm. and you didn't deserve that. You didn't deserve this circumstance or this thing. And the gospel is a story of someone who undeniably will fight for you and will love you and will be with you forever. And it's like, you no longer have to live in fear that someone is going to fail you um, because they will. Like, like for me, it was, it was not like, oh, I need to have, um, <laughs> I need to have more, more hope that this person is going to be there for me, which maybe is a bit pessimistic, but it's like, no, it doesn't actually matter if they are or they're not. Um, because like, I know that I have, that I have Jesus, which ugh, can sometimes sound a little cheesy, but like, I know that I have mm. Jesus with me. He's, he is ultimately my source, my, my rock, like who, who I rely on, um, mm-hmm. when I feel like, oh, okay, everything sucks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so I think I've just gotten the opportunity to meet people that because I have shared parts of my story that then they can share parts of their story. And it's like, I don't know, like, okay, we are the same. Like, mm-hmm. this is the message I needed to hear. This is the message you need to hear too. Yeah. That's I good. think that's huge too. Just as far as we're talking about the kingdom, I think everybody on some level or other feels that they have to earn love. Yeah. And oh, that's yeah. the invitation of the kingdom of this is a place where love is not earned. It's freely given. Right. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. I think that like for me, it's, it's elevating yourself out of, and, and like, not the, not disconnecting from everyday life, but like seeing that every day is, is a step towards building a, a bigger story mm-hmm. um, that, you know, ca- calling like purpose out, like Jeff kind of, you said purpose, but like a little bit longer term thinking of, you know, your, your engagement, you know, for me in this season right now, goodness, like <laughs> engaging with three kids and being exhausted. Like this weekend was rough, was not, did not win dad of the weekend. Um, not even <laughs> close. And, but just like, like that, that remembering, like <laughs> the way you speak to your kid, the way you respond to your kid, like it's a single moment. It's a, it's a dumb argument with a four-year-old, but like, <laughs> but the way that you go about doing that is building this massive story, this legacy, um, you know, that will culminate over the next 10, 15, 20 years and and to me, it's like reminding people that like it matters, that you matter, the things you're doing matter, um, that, that there's a, there is a purpose for the stuff that feels boring, that feels, you know, ordinary, that feels like it's just life. Um, like those things, like God has a plan in the middle of that for it to be good, not just to be okay, not to just happen. Like you said, Jeff, not just to have kids and grow up and hope they're good, but like to do something good in them mm-hmm. and to, and to help them to connect to God the same way that we do. Um, and, and to me, like that, like you just look around the world and it's just exhausting. Like yep. you want to keep up with things. You want to keep up with schedules. You want to keep up with sports schedules. You want to keep up with school things. You want to keep up with the neighbor down the street. Like it, it's exhausting all these things in our world that, that end up not not lasting. Like mm-hmm. they they don't go on forever. You know they don't they don't provide anything for you. At least the the cost is not worth the input. It's not worth the investment. And and so then there's this other way of living. And there's this better way of living. And it's slower. Mm-hmm. And it's quieter sometimes. And and it's peaceful. And and it's joy that's not attached to circumstance because those will change. And like that to me is, it was the, the, the attractional piece because I, I did grow up comfortable and I grew up with, you know, being blessed and, and I, you know, my parents are great. I love my parents, um, love my family. I love the things I got to do. Nothing, really nothing was bad. Like we might characterize it as, um, but that was my deal is just like, is this it? And it's not, like, yeah. it's not it. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not it to to just keep fishing. Like yeah. it, it was a call for, for Peter, like come fish for men. A- and what's funny is like Peter followed Jesus, but he still fished. Yep. Like they still did those things. Like th- there was still, there was still these, this work, there was still stuff they did, but like, but it, it was doing that as well as connecting to a purpose beyond yourself yeah. that would last beyond your life. Yeah. And that to me is what was, what it was attractional. It's something I think that, I want to share with people too is, 
is like you're not just you're not just parenting to get them out of the house. Like like you're raising uh, like a little warrior. You're raising this this little one who's going to go out and and do good things and 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 point people to the truth of of who Jesus is and the the love that that is available to them. Like you get to as a parent, you get to do that. You get to do that as a, as your for yourself, and like that's exciting. That's way more exciting than pushing some other agenda or trying to build some other business thing that's just not going to last. It doesn't help anybody that kills yourself while you're on your, on your climb of success. Like that is, that's just so much better. Yeah. And, and that's the invitation I think we're going to hear about this whole series. Yeah. And I think that's the, that just shows the purpose of what it is. And it, it kind of fills you up and, and takes over your life because I've always rested on the fact that God has done this in me and it does not matter what my circumstances are in life, this is what I'm going to be doing. I, it's, it's great that I get to work for a church and do ministry as my job, but I've settled on the fact that if this doesn't work out, I can go back to being a server at Cracker Barrel, even though I'd never, ever want to do that. <laughs> but it would be okay because mm. the job is not, not my purpose. Mm-hmm. It's my life. It's what I'm doing yeah. to move that kingdom forward. And so I can be doing this. I can be an electrical engineer. I can be a garbage man. I can do whatever, but I'm still going to be looking for opportunities yep. to live that way. Yep. And I think that's kind of the last week where we'll talk about <laughs> believing for more. Uh, and, and next week we're, I think we're talking about really prayer and um, this invitation to pray and this invitation, uh, even kind of like advanced player move of like praying for your enemies and like, what does that really mean? Um, and then week three talking about um, you know, like you're invited to to live a life that is generous, that 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 focuses more on living with an open hand, not a closed fist, and um, and all of these things point back to what Montana kind of asked in the beginning, like the invitation to to live in the kingdom of God now, like it's open, like the doors are open, it's not a real kingdom, you know, there's not lines, there's not geography, <laughs> like like you can do that today, like you can walk right in, you can be a citizen, you can live that because of what Jesus has done for you. And so a um, couple things as we wrap up, I think just little challenges, like read Romans 8 today. Mm-hmm. Go read Romans 8. Maybe personally, it's my favorite, so I just want you to. Uh, but the second thing I think was really powerful is us sitting back and like remembering why did we say yes to the invitation in the first place? Mm-hmm. And then the second part of that is how can we then, how can we then take our story, use it for good um, to help someone else hear that invitation because we can't push them. Obviously that's not our job. doesn't matter. We just yeah. plant seed. We just, we just tell them, Hey, here's what, here's what it looks like for me. Um, but I think that would be really good for anyone listening to really sit back and say, why did I say yes to Jesus in the first place? And how can I then share that story with someone else who may be in the same spot and hasn't said yes yet? And you'll get a whole month, uh, you know, you can always invite someone to church, of course, but, <laughs> but I think these, these weeks are specific to someone who's really questioning, um, who's really uh, maybe disengaged, de-churched, pick your word, um, that th- these would be really good weeks to say, hey, you've been asking about, like, why do we pray? Like, do you really believe that? Why is that important? Next week, perfect week to come. And so, um, but yeah, I, I think that'd be good for all of us. Yeah. And any final thoughts? Perfect. Well, thanks for for joining us for Talk It Out. Uh, We will uh, see you this week for part two of your Invited on Sunday uh, in service and uh, looking forward to that. And we will catch you next time right here uh, on wherever you're listening to Talk It Out. Uh, We'll see you next time.